Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video tutorial so I couldn't find any tutorials about XCB um, like nowhere right and the resource in Google is really rare and whenever you find a resource it's kind of like obscure and it's just an HTML file <laughs> Which is crazy so i had to go through all that pain for you guys so i can now show you all that i learned okay so let's get started so by the way xcb is basically intended to replace xlib which is using the x11 protocol uh and x11 protocol is intended for communication like if you have a desktop in the US and you want to connect it for, for, uh, to it from Morocco, you can use X11 protocol uh, to easily connect and it's pretty fast, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna see how it, it actually achieved that. Uh, and XCB is much more modern and faster, much faster than uh, Xlib, okay? In that regards, uh, because of a lot of things. And anyways, so let's actually start up so by the way first of all i'm gonna actually create uh, i'm gonna get in it because i like to use uh, github so get in it there you go i just initialized an empty git repository now let's create our main loop first of all of course so integer main right and there you go now i can return exit success there you go import the macro i'm going to import it from stdlib okay so include stdlib.h and here's my cmake uh, list.txt so cmake minimum required project i'm calling my project xcb tutorial i'm using the cmake c standard 17 then i'm use i'm making an executable or adding an executable called xcb tutorial with the the file main.c as a source file okay now after that i want to link uh, xcb but before that you know let's actually just try to run this and there you go we just get uh, exit code of zero which is this exit success here that we got from stdlib all right fine nice 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 lovely now let's actually go ahead and uh, and first of all let's let's try to connect to uh xcb okay so xcb connection t well before we could use xcb stuff we have to include xcb okay so include xcb slash xcb dot h there you go now we could say xcb connection uh t connection in fact no let's let's i like to actually put the standard files first uh, just a preference okay so connection of course a pointer is equal to xcb connect there you go here you give it the display name i'm just going to give it null to just select uh to use the environment variable display uh, okay and screen pay so for screen pay by the way essentially the display name you could give it where to connect exactly which display you want to connect to if you set null you just it's just going to connect to whatever uh environment variable display is pointing to uh, so here screen p also gives you the preferred screen number now i'm going to create an int screen number so uh screen number here i can pass in an address to screen number so you can put uh that value inside that variable because i give it the address not the value itself okay next up is of course uh whenever you connect well surely you have to disconnect so connection there you go lovely stuff now how to check for errors now the thing is xcb connect will give you a valid connection pointer uh, even if it fails so you should always make sure to disconnect uh, if you want a proper you know proper cleanup even in, on error but i don't care like if it errors just you know stop the program that's it so i'm just going to use assert uh, since i'm too lazy <laughs> import macro assert from assert.h there you go and assert should uh, should be just fine okay so assert now i'm gonna use of course you shouldn't you can't you can't check if connection is null because as i said it always gives you a valid pointer 
um, even if there is an error. So how you do that? Well, you check if there is an error. So XCB connection has error, you give it the connection and you just assert that there is no error and that's how it goes. Not assert, not XCB connection has error and you give it the connection pointer and that's it. Now this is the XCB connection uh, T struct, right? So anyways, all right. Next up is, so XCB disconnect. All right, I forgot this semicolon there. Now let's make sure that this actually goes ahead. Now, as you can see, we got an indefined reference, which I was expecting uh, to XCB connects, XCB connection is error and XCB disconnect. That's basically means that it failed to uh, link because it couldn't find those uh, function implementations because I have to actually link to XCB. And how do you link to XCB? At least in uh, CMake, you say target link libraries, you, you tell it the project name, which is in this case, XCB tutorial, and then you give it which libraries you want to link to, uh, delimited by spaces. So in my case, I'm gonna say XCB, all right? And um, if you're using the command line, you probably have to say something like dash L XCB or something like that. I don't really remember, but yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much it. If we run this, there you go, exit code zero, which means everything is good. Now we have connected and disconnected successfully from the XCB. Uh, okay, nice, 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 nice. All right, so pretty cool stuff. By the way, let's add the, the, the source file. And in fact, before adding the source file, let's add that to a directory called SRC. Let's put main.c there, refactor. Uh, this is, of course, just pre-reference. Pre pre preference, preference, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm just going to say git add src. And there you go. Uh, so now I added that. Nice, lovely stuff. OK, lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's make sure everything is still fine. Of course not, because there is no such file in the CMake. Should make sure to tell it is src slash main.c here. Okay, nice. Now it's all good, lovely. Now after creating a connection, what we need to do is to create a window. So how do you create a window? Uh, okay, so xcb window t window equal to xcb generate id. The first step, uh, Actually, before generating an ID, really, before creating a window, really, you have to choose which screen you want. And remember that uh, XCB Connect could actually gives us the preferred screen by the display. Uh, and it's inside screen number now, okay? Because in fact, if I breakpoint here and debug build, you can see that screen point zero, which means the preferred sc screen for my display is zero. The first screen and the only one anyways, because I only have one screen. Um, so. How do you actually get that screen? Now, there's two ways of doing this. I'm gonna show you the two ways, okay? So you say XCB setup T uh, pointer setup is equal to XCB get setup. There you go, you give it the connection. And uh, essentially that's the connection, right? It sounds like Discards qualifiers. Okay, so you should make sure to add the const right there. There you go. It's a constant pointer, which means you cannot write into that. Okay, fine. Now, XCB gets set up. Next up, uh, after the setup, you create an iterator. So, XCB iterator T, uh, screen iterator T, right? So, screen iterator T, pointer, if I remember well, screen iterator equal to XCB screen uh actually set up roots iterator there you go and then you give it the setup there you go all right lovely stuff now what this actually gives us it gives us a, okay it's not a pointer there it just gives us an iterator right there okay, okay interesting after the screen iterator you could say uh screen t okay so xcb screen t pointer screen is equal to what is equal to screen iterator dot data and this will give you the first screen okay but 
if you want to get, for example, the second screen, what you could do is you could say XCB uh, screen next, and then you give it the screen iterator, and it will actually advance the iterator uh, one time. Okay, of course, I think you give it the address here. There you go, you give it the address. And that would uh, make sure that data now actually sees into the second screen if it exists. But instead of doing this, in fact, we have a screen number. It could be zero, it could be one, it could be two, it could be three. Uh, you could do this uh, this way using for loop, etc., to check and stuff like that. But that's kind of, uh, this whole thing is kind of messy, right? So there is something that can help us, okay? There is a, there is an AUX, an auxiliary function, that can help us do all of this stuff pretty easily. And it is called XCB AUX. Now, uh, to use that, you have to include XCB Util. Now, even the resources that you're going to find in the web, uh, they're not going to be using XCB Util, which is just going to make my, your life even harder. But I'm going to actually help you even use the utility. Which is quite interesting. So XCB AUX get screen. So there is this X auxiliary function from the XCB util. You give it the connection of XCB. Then you give it the integer screen, the screen number. Uh, there you go. Um, and then you could of course store this into a screen T, XCB screen T, surely. So XCB screen T uh, pointer screen is equal to that. Now we got our screen, pretty beautiful stuff. Pretty beautiful stuff. All right, now let's make sure everything is still fine. Oh, well, not fine. And define reference to XCB AUX good screen. So since we're using this function, which is actually defined XCB util, we have to also link XCB util. Okay, so XCB util. Otherwise, if you don't want to link XCB Util, which I highly not recommend, like I highly recommend to just use the Util. <laughs> um, but if you don't want to, you could just use the method that I shown you earlier, although with some more steps. Uh, I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for the reader that wants to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, so screen is equal to XCB AUX get screen. Uh, and by the way, the iterator, uh, just to help you more, that an XCB screen iterator is actually a, an iterator, uh, like a, a struct, which holds a pointer to data, then rem, which stands for remaining, and then index. All right, so that's all I can tell you. You can research more on the web or whatever you want. Anyways, so next up is now we got our screen, okay? our preferred screen because we're using it here. Now we could create the window. So XCB window T window is equal to XCB generate window. Generate ID, I mean, right? So connection. Now the thing is, XCB is not like Win32 T, uh, Win32, <laughs> Win32 API, for example, okay? Uh, Win32 doesn't really take into account that much the fact that you could be connected remotely uh, to a window or whatever, or to a display, etc. Uh, so, but XCB is not uh, X XCB X11 X11 etc. Uh, it's actually accounted for that. And since you're accounting for that, you could be like you could be connected like let's say from the computer is in the US, for example, and you're connected from Morocco, which is my country, by the way. But yeah. Um, so if you want to send some data, you have to travel all that distance, all right? So you have to make sure since you're networking here, you have to make sure to send as little data as possible just to require data. And how we do that? Well, instead of, you know, like, uh, sending a whole window name or whatever, or a whole resource, right? You just create an ID, you generate an ID, and then you tell uh, you tell the server that this ID, you know, uh, is referring to something. Like it is referring to a window, it is referring to, I don't know, some graphics context or whatever. Okay, and 
And essentially, whenever you want to refer to that resource, you just give it the ID. In fact, XCB window T is just a U into T. There you go, as you can see. All right, lovely stuff. So you generate an ID for the window, but we still didn't create the window. We just generate an ID for it. So how we can actually create the window? Well, we could say create window. All right, here now you give it the connection. Because there's a lot of parameters, I'm just gonna you know, go to the next line. Depth, for depth, we could give it, uh, could just give it some value for the depth, or we could give it, get it from the screen and how you get it from screen, basically just say screen root depth. There you go, root depth. And the root is basically a window because in fact, if we go to the screen, right? Okay, there you go. We have all of these values that you could use. For example, there is width in millimeters, millimeters of the screen, height in millimeters. There is minimum installed maps, maximum installed maps, root visual, back in stores, save enders, root depth, allowed depth plan, white pixel, black pixel, default color map root. Now, the thing is, XCB is also accounting for the fact that not all this, because, you know, it's an old thing, right? not all displays can actually support true colors which are basically rgb rgba rgb etc right um there is some screens that could be mono like monochromatic uh, it could be just black and white or you never really know okay um because it's really designed xlib is designed like in the old times okay by mit so what's your uh, XCB only actually only guarantees to you two colors, white and black. That's why you have a white pixel and black pixel given to you. Okay. Um, otherwise, if you do anything else, you just depends on if that display supports it or not. But nowadays, most displays actually supports <laughs> uh, true colors. Okay. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Now the root, uh, the root, the root, the root, there you go. The root is an actually XCB window T. Now in the display, each screen have a root window that basically takes the whole screen. And that is what is called a root, essentially. It's the screen that have no parent, basically, which kind of represents the screen in some sense. But anyways, anyways, let's not go too crazy right now. The window. So let's now we now we need to give it the the ID that we want to refer to this created window. Okay, here where you actually tell the server uh, which ID you want to use. Okay. All uh, right. Interesting. So next step, you give it the parent, and the parent in this case is the screen screen root window. So XCB root, uh, not XCB uh, screen a root, not depth root. Right. Next up is X and the Y, the width and the height. Okay, so the X and the Y, most most displays doesn't care about X and the Y in Linux, you know. Uh, most displays uh, just display managers just, you know, uh, selects whatever X, Y suits them, right? So don't even care about X and Y. Uh, but you could actually set it if you want. There is the width and the height, which is, of course, the width and the height of the screen. Uh, by the way, let's actually just group X and the Y and the width and the height in the same place. Okay, that's the height that I selected. Now, the border width, I don't bother with that, zero. Class, uh, same thing, but I can actually uh, explain. So there is window class input output and there is out uh, input only. Okay, so uh, window class. So as you can see, input output, input only and copy from parent. If you say copy from parent, basically it will copy the window class of the parent, which is in this case, the screen root. Okay, uh, otherwise you could say either the input output or input only. Input only if you want a window that doesn't render anything to the screen, it just captures uh, inputs, but that's, I, I don't really, see a use case for at least for now but uh, anyways we get to use input output because we actually want to render to the screen uh not just input 
Uh, next up is the visual. And of course, we're going to get the visual from the screen. So screen root. Uh, oh, what's going on there? Root visual. There you go. There is actually something called copy from parent that you could use, but uh, no need to use it here. I'm just passing it explicitly. So for the value mask, value mask is interesting. I'm just going to set it to zero right now. And then you have a value list, which could be a, a an array of integers, okay? So an array of integers of enums, basically, essentially. And how do you do it? Well, of course, you'd... I'm basically using the initializer uh, kind of uh, syntax, right? And there you go. Okay, I'm going to get back to it later until we get our window. But for now, this is what you got. So a reference to a integer array with nothing inside of it. And the value mask is zero. No masks there. Okay, interesting stuff. Uh, or instead of zero, I could say maybe CB value. Uh, I mean, if I say this, is there? Yeah, you could say mask no events for now. There you go, XB event, mask no events, which is basically zero. Okay, what's next? Of course, let's not, uh, let's make sure to actually uh, set the semicolon there. There we go. Uh, by the way, create window only gives you a cookie. Let's see if I control here, hold control and click, you get, as you can see, void cookie. Now cookie, what it is, is basically kind of like an identifier again, just like the window ID. Uh, but basically you could use this identifier uh, to refer to this request because creating a window is a request to the server to create that window, okay? Now, if you want to get the reply, of that request, you have to pass in to some function that cookie, okay? If you want to refer basically to that request, for example, to get the reply of that request from the server, you have to refer using that uh, cookie. But in this case, I don't care about the cookie, okay? Um, so yeah, XCB create window. Now next up is, let's see, uh, next up, it won't show the window yet. It will create the window, but it's not shown yet. But if you want to show it, you have to map the window into the screen, right? So how do you map the window? You say XCB map window. This is basically uh, showing the window. Uh, it's just the technical word map, right? Map is kind of like you can think about a show. Uh, but anyways, connection. Give it the connection, you give it the window ID. There you go. Now, if you, of course, let's make sure to put a while loop, an infinite while loop for now, to just so the application doesn't exit, uh, you know, indirectly and we don't see any window. So if we say this right now, nothing will happen. And you know why? Because we didn't send those requests uh, to the server yet, right? There, XCB is just buffering all those requests until you tell it to, to send them or it gets implicitly uh, sent. Um, and how you do that, you say XCV flush, which is gonna go through all the buffered requests and send them to the server. XCV flush connection. And there you go, now we have our window. Um, just like that, it have no title, right? And if you close the window, uh, the application is still running, nothing happens. Uh, so as you can see, we have to handle a lot of things. Uh, yeah, so now what we could do, by the way, XCB flush can actually, uh, if it's if it's success, it can give l greater than zero. Otherwise, it will be zero. So to make sure it is success, we're going to use assert here too. So assert XCB flush. Uh -huh. There you go. Okay. Nice stuff. Now we're all good with that. Now, how to change the title, for example? Okay, so before mapping the window, we could actually say, of course, by the way, make sure to put all these requests before XCB flush. Otherwise, you have to create another XCB flush. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you could say set uh, window. 
okay change property right exhibit change property and you have to fill all of this stuff which is quite interesting like you could say connection then you give it the mode xcb uh oh all right prop mode okay so prop mode you could say either replace prepend append in my case i'm just going to replace the property value then you give it the window that you're talking about they want to change the property off then you give it an atom um essentially properties again you don't actually give it a string for example property of title or window name etc uh, because you know strings are quite big each each uh, character can get up to eight bits one byte right uh, of course ascii characters unicode can be even more um, which is not ideal uh, if you're on a remote machine like you know it's like there's some bandwidth uh, there okay but to optimize bandwidth for example, you could tell the server that uh, here is, for example, a string, right? You upload it to the server, okay? Uh, then the server gives you back an atom. An atom is basically some way, uh, a number that or ID that identifies whatever data you gave it, which is in this case, a string of a property, okay? Um, then later on, whenever you want to, for example, uh, refer to that property, you just Tell, give it that uh, that uh, atom it gives you that number in fact an atom is just a number okay uh internally but yeah so to refer to uh properties xcb have atoms okay so in my case i'm gonna go with wm name so the title in uh, xcb is called name wm stands for window manager that's basically the atom. This atom is built in, essentially, and it's referring to the number 39. Now, as you can see, you have all these uh, atoms right here, which is quite lovely. Next up is the type. So what is the type of this uh, property? In this case, it's a title, which is a string. So we're going to go with string because it could be a lot of things. It could be any property. For example, it could be... Theoretically, it could be, for example, some kind of property that is a number value, okay? Uh, format, 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 format. So, um, format, I'm just going to give it 8 because there is 8 bits in character. But to be honest, I'm not exactly sure about format because I couldn't find a, a lot of resource about it. In fact, no resource about it. They just say eight for the title so i would guess it's the how much bits in a character but yeah in, in in one data basically in one data element so how much data you want well first of all i want to create the the title okay as a char pointer okay so const char title is equal to what let's give it a title code taco for example now, code attacker, how much characters there is? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is eight characters. So I can put eight there. And then the data, which is, of course, the title itself. The title, right, nice. So this is what we got now, a semicolon. And there you go. Now we change the property. We replace that property value of that window. Uh, the window manager name, CB Adam string. Uh, 8 bits, I think, and stuff like that. Anyways, so if we do this now, as you can see, the title have ex successfully been changed. And what's nice about this XCB flush and XCB in general X, uh, is the fact that you don't wait. Like when you say XCB create window, you don't wait to actually create the window. Okay, which is good for both multi-threading and also networking, okay, because the network, right? So instead of sending one request after the other and waiting for that request, you just create all those requests, you buffer them, then you send them all at once when you call XCB flush. While in X11, I think, uh, not X11, Xlib, sorry. And Xlib, whenever, like if you say X create window, it just goes ahead right there and sends a request and you have to wait for that request to to give you a reply okay 
Uh, and you could, by the way, get the reply for that window, but I don't care right now. I mean, uh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, instead of data length, we could actually just, uh, you know, say Sterling to get the length of the string and give it the title. So it's going to automatically do that for us. So if somehow we change the title, it will change to reflect that change basically. But anyways, 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 anyways. okay. Show context actions, import function. Of course, I'm going to import this function from string.h header. As you can see, now I got string.h, assert.h, std look, pretty cool stuff. Uh, all right, interesting indeed. Now we still have the same thing, right? But now this time, instead, instead of uh, when I want to change the title to something else, I don't have to change the length again into computer uh, manually, all right? As you can see, it's all going pretty cool. And now, since we're actually into this guy, let's just put the title and stuff like that on the top. So the width, there you go, width. Your width is equal to 720. It's your height is equal to form 80. Just to be more organized, I'm going to say window title. Window width. Window height. Okay, now we could say window height, uh, width, window height here. You could even put the X and the Y if you want to, just like this. Integer window X, uh, okay, is equal to zero. Integer window Y is equal to zero, etc. okay. Now we could say window X and the window why? So you got the point. Anyways, but looks like the these are not integers. They are int sixteen t, uh, aka shorts. So you could say short I mean, hold on a second. Yeah, x y are shorts, but width and height are inside shorts. Interesting. So in signed shorts. Otherwise, instead of this, you could also say to be exact, you could say integer 16 T, just like the API does it, or I mean the XCB does it. And same thing with this guy. U int for in signed. U int 16 T. All right, nice stuff. Lovely. And that's essentially it. Did you mean title? Okay, so window title. There you go. Now we're all good to go, as you can see. Pretty cool stuff. Now it's actually, uh, for example, how to actually make the window in resizable, because right now it is actually resizable, as you can see. How can you make it not resizable? And I'm just going to create a Boolean value here for window resizable. Okay. Uh, which is going to be equal to, let's see. Hmm, let's say true for now. Fine. And here, let's just import the symbol bool from std bool. There you go. There you go. Now we're going to check. Uh, if not, I recommend actually doing uh, all of this changing tasks of the window. Of course, after creating the window, that's for sure. And before mapping the window, I don't know really if that helps, but yeah. Uh, if not resizable. So if not window is because by default it is resizable, the window is resizable, but if not is window is resizable, then we gotta do some stuff. Okay. So I'm gonna say XCB size hints. But to actually do this stuff, I have to actually import. I mean you could do it just using XCB, but it's just a lot of stuff, right? Uh that you have to know, memorize or look up, etc., whatever. 
Uh, so not defined. I'm gonna include something else. And by the way, this uh, standard header files, put them here. Include XCB ICCM. XCB ICCC. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, okay, so ICCM stands for something. I don't really remember. It was some client manager. I don't know. A lot of CCs right there. <laughs> but anyways, uh, include XCB ICC. So now XCB ICC is <laughs> anyways, uh, XCB size hints. Okay, it gives us this XCB size hints. So window size hints. Okay, so now we could say, by the way, before actually going to resizable, we could change using ICCM or whatever, you could change XCB change property to XCB ICCM set WM name. You give it the connection, then you give it the window, then you give it the encoding, which is in this case XCB atom uh, string. Then you give it the format, which is in this case eight and name length is Arlen window title. Um, yeah, window title. Uh, okay, window title. My my brain has stopped for a while there, but yeah. As you can see, you could do it this way, or you could do it this way. XCB uh, ICCCM is just kind of like a wrapper over XCB, but anything you could do with XCB ICCCM and the utility and XCB util, you could do it with XCB alone, but yeah. Um, also, this prop mode replace, you could actually replace it with zero if you want to, although it would be less readable, but there you go. But it's still longer than this guy. And this guy is much more readable. Uh, so I'm just going to go with ICCM version because why not? Okay. Uh, next up is how do you set the size hints? So you set the size hints through. There you go. WM size hints. Give it the connection. Then you give it the window that you're talking about. And then you give it the property atom, uh, which is uh, a built-in atom called the uh, uh, WM normal hints, okay, and then the hints is our uh, uh, a reference or an address to window size hints. There you go, all this stuff. Now, before actually setting the WM size hints, we can actually give it some stuff. So set, uh, so set size hints, WM size oh my god i forgot iccc m set wm size hence there you go not size hence oh my god uh what there you go uh, XCCCM size hints set there you go set and you have all of this stuff that you could set you can set the aspect the position the size the min size max size base size when gravity gravity kind of understood it a bit it's basically when the window gets resized if there is anything any graphics in the window where should it stick to should it stick to the top left corner the top right corner the center what exactly that's what gravity is uh, but i don't care about gravity right now so how we could make it in resizable we set the minimum size and the maximum size and hence here we give it where to actually set that window size hence there you go here you give it the minimum width i'm just going to set it to the width so it becomes in resizable so if you set the minimum and the maximum to both to the width and height of the window well <laughs> it's in resizable so window height here and we actually uh, run this and defined reference to XCB ICC so we have to link that too 
So XCB. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, like this. And there you go. Code Ataku. Nice stuff. Uh, but, oh yeah, I wanted to show you how it, it is in Resizable. Yo, what? No, it didn't work. Hold on a second. I think I missed something. Oh yeah, because it's not, it's resizable. But if I set this to false, you can notice that I can actually resize it in this way, but I cannot in the other way, right? So I cannot actually resize it inwards, but outwards, yeah. As you can see here. Why? Too simply because I only set to the minimum sizes, but not the maximums. So I'll set the maximums too. And by the way, before doing that, we could also see that if I set to the zero, for example, to win min width and, or min height, uh, you can see that, well, it is resizable in this axis, but not this axis, as you can see. Which is quite interesting that you can do this, but yeah. Maximum size. And just an information, by the way, that XCB Rex 11 protocol generally doesn't really like you to actually, uh, display managers doesn't like you to resize, like to resize the window and change its location, especially changing its location without a user's request. It just doesn't like that. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, with the width, window height. So now I set to the minimum and the maximum. Now, if we do this now, it is indeed resizable. I just cannot resize it anymore. Um, but if I actually uh, toggle this window resizable now, true. There you go. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Nice. Uh, next up is how can you uh, color the window. How can you color the window? Mm, let's see. So here in XCB event, actually not event. Oh my god. Yeah, it's not. It's actually XCB CW. Is there no event there? I don't think there is. I mean, hold on a second. No, there isn't. So you just say zero and that's it, right? So there's no enum for that. Okay, fine. Now, the thing is, uh, the thing about network is that you don't need to send information that you don't need to send. And you don't wait for information that you don't need to wait for, that you don't need, right? So basically, for example, in other APIs or whatever, or other libraries, um, you already get in all the events, for example, you get in all the values, all of the properties, all is one place, right? But when it comes to networks, you have to optimize bandwidth. So you have to exactly make sure to, to tell the server what to send, what you're, uh, what you're wanting to receive, etc. For example, the server by default, it won't send you any events but you can tell it to send you some events, okay? And how you do that, well, you say XCB, CW, event mask, right? And, and this is the way to, to tell it which events you want. And here, you come here and you give it in the array, uh, you give it the, the events that you want, or together, of course. So for example, event mask exposure, okay? You could give it exposure. You could give it another event. For example, XCB event mask uh, button one motion or button motion, button release, enter window, focus change, key map state, key press, key release, etc. You just or them together. And or doesn't care about order, by the way. And if I control here, Look at that. There's all of this stuff that you can actually register events for. So if you don't register, if you don't add the masks for those events, you don't actually get those events inside your while loop, your, your application loop. Okay. So 
in my case, I only care about exposure for now, I think. Uh, so yeah, now I'll just go to exposure. And how do you actually now handle that? Well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna create a bool is running variable is equal to true. Now while is running, do stuff. This is the application loop basically. Now I'm gonna go through all the events that are inside the queue, this particular frame. Okay, so XCB pull events, pull for event. You give it the connection. And of course this XCB pull event, it either gives you null, which is basically there's no events to queued, uh, to pull, but to process. Otherwise it gives you XCB generic event. Event T, okay, so generic event. And there you go. Now you could say generic event is equal to this guy. Right? Uh, and I can actually add those uh, stuff like this. But I think just to make it more readable, maybe we could. Do this. You know what? Let's just leave it like that. Okay, fine. Uh, equal to that. Just make sure to add those parentheses. Now, generic event should be a pointer to a generic event. Okay, it gives us a pointer to a generic event. All right, so what's next? Now you actually have to know which type of event it is because it it's it is a generic event. It could be any anything. So if we actually click on XCB generic event, it gives you the response type and some other stuff. So the response type is what you need here. And you we can make a switch switch between generic event the response type and then you actually have to mask it uh, mask it like this then you can see 0 x 80 uh, uh, 80 this actually inverts the binary value uh, okay but instead of doing this cryptic thing and you have to remember this stuff and it looks so unreadable um, since we have XCB util, which imports something called XCB event, okay, which gives us a cool macro here, as you can see here, it's called XCB event response type. Because in fact, that XCB response have two things, have the, the sent, like have two information, two bits of information. You have sent, you have type, okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is the mask. And then when you say this, it gives you zero x80 basically, and that's how you get the scent. If you want a response type, which is what we want now, we just do this. So instead of uh, uh, inverse inverse of zero x80, you could just say zero x7f. All right. But instead of this whole thing, we could just say this xcb event response type we could just use that macro as long as you're importing xcb event the h or importing utils which already does so xcb event response type and you give it the event our generic event and there you go now that does that for you okay so fine now in case of xcb expose yeah in case of x XCB expose. Now pay attention that here it's XCB event mask exposure, but here it's actually a case XCB expose. Okay. Now we could do all sorts of things. I like to put the cases like this break. Okay. And then here I can say print F expose. Now I need to import a CDIO. Oh man, let's go put it here. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm not getting any exposed events. Interesting. Uh, let's see why that's the case. Let's see why that's the case. So a case XCB expose response type. 
Oh, because I didn't add the new line. Okay, let's add the new line. And there you go, as you can see, I'm getting exposed. If you hide the window and get it again, it's gonna expose, okay. Now the thing is, we only have the generic event, but you can cast that using, this is kind of like the polymorphism of C, since it is a, a, a pointer to a generic, right? Some sense. So now we can say CB expose event T, okay. And you can basically do this with all the event types. So XCB expose event T, expose event is equal to what? Equal to cast XCB expose event T, cast what? Cast the generic event. Uh, there you go. There you go. Okay, pretty cool stuff. As you can see, this is how you cast the generic event to expose event. And now you have access to all these information. Okay, there you go. You have the X and the Y of the exposed area. Which area got exposed? You got the X and the Y, the width and height. Basically, this guy gives you the, rect the rectangle of the area because that got exposed. You have the count, you have the window. Which window? Because here we're getting the events for all the windows. So if you have multiple windows, you have to also make sure that the window is right. So basically, uh, say if, since we have only one window, it doesn't matter, but just showing you up this guy. So you can say if uh, expose event the window, now, of course not dot this pointer because expose event, it's not just a normal structure, it's a pointer. Okay, to a struct. Uh, so expose event that window is equal to what? It's equal to our window, essentially. So if that's the case, then go ahead and say expose. So this is how you basically uh, filter events per window, if you have multiple windows. But in my case, since I have only one window, it doesn't really matter if you do or do not. Uh, but yeah, still same thing since I have only one window. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? All right, lovely. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it there, so if anyone wants to understand from that, just to make sure you know that. Anyways, never mind. So, case okay, so CB expose, okay. Now, let's actually also see, why not? Let's see the other values, just for the case of sake of demonstration. Uh, okay, the expose event dot x, expose event dot y. Oh well, since it's a pointer, I have to use this guy. Expose events dot uh, width. Expose events dot height. There you go. And that's basically it. These are basically formats for integers. Now, as you can see, it gives you the x, the y, the width, and the height. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty cool. So that's expose. And by the way, expose you, you want to use this event uh, for rendering. So like, it will tell you when the window needs to be re-rendered. So if it is, for example, a GUI application, you can actually go ahead and re-render. And using this uh, expose event X, Y, width, and height, you can, you can, if you want, you can only render like the the part that really needs to be rendered, which is the part that got exposed uh, that needs rendering that actually needs rendering. So yeah, you could just update the window area that needs updating basically that is not uh, that is destroyed. Okay. So that's essentially it. But by the way, uh, I'm using XCB poll for event, but there's also another event called there's a poll for queued event, which basically you can look into the next event, but don't consume it. Poll for event actually consumes it. XCB wait for event, and by the way, XCB poll for event gives you null when there is no queued like events left that are that is that are polled right, and uh, that are in the queue. Um, 
And when there is an event, it just gives you a generic event, as you can see here. For wait for event, it just waits, it just stalls the CPU, it, not CPU, but uh, the program execution until an event is, is uh, ready. And this is uh, useful for GUI applications, like for power saving, for saving power, like for laptops uh or phones although i don't think xdb works for phones i don't know to be honest but yeah uh for laptops for example if you care about uh battery power right so you could just leave the program until there is an event ready and then it will uh, go ahead and uh, and keep going Otherwise, it will return null. There is an IO error, okay, input output error, which is interesting. If you want to use uh, wait for input, wait for event, you don't have to actually say XCB pull for event, for event like this. In fact, uh, in fact, this won't work. You only need one while loop. And I'm gonna actually show you just a little bit on how that works. By the way, I don't need the semicolon here. I'm just going to comment this guy for a second. So while, uh, while, 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 so while it's running and let's see, XCB waits for event, give it the connection and this guy gives you the generic event. So XCB generic event, there we go. And generic event is equal to that guy. And we could add that parentheses and there you go. Okay, and this will basically, if there is an error, it will just exit the loop. Otherwise, if you don't want to exit the loop when there is an error, what you could do is you don't have to do it here, basically. While it's running, you could just say this. So you could assert if generic event is equal to null, then just basically uh, assert. All right, so if not generic event, if not generic event, basically it's not equal to null. Okay. So main assertion not generic event valid. Oh, I think it's the opposite. I mean, let me make sure not equal to null. No, it's working just fine. So, so it should be like this: assert generic event. So assert that it exists. Exists, right? Next up, you could basically handle that event. You could say this switch switch xcv event response blah 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 just like we did before although this time you don't have while while you only have one while loop and you just wait for the events okay so pretty cool stuff indeed In a search generic event field. So as you can see here, when we, when we have a an an error, as you can see, it just erred right there. Anyways, so that's pretty much it for that one. But since I'm not rendering to anything or whatever, I'm just gonna leave it like I'm gonna use this guy, wait for event instead of the other guy. Uh, just it's kind of cool. So anyways. What's next? So I've shown you XCBCW event mask. Now, what if I actually want to clear the window with some background color? How do I how do I do that? First of all, I will tell XCB that I'm gonna give it a back uh, a color, a background color. So how do you do that? XCBCW black pixel, uh, back pixel, right? And as you can see, all of these guys are starting with CW, and of course, you order them together. Now here is where things gets uh, clunky a bit, right? Is that, okay, first let's give it the back pixel, okay? 
So the packed pixel you could say, for example, screen black pixel. Okay, we could use the black pixel to draw the pixel black. Narrowing conversion from U in 32T. Uh, okay, let's actually set the C and 32 T, I think. There you go. Okay. And we're getting this. Interesting. Because probably I have to actually reverse the order. There you go. As you can see, now it's right. And why didn't why did it have to reverse the order? Basically, as I said, you have to actually, uh, since uh, CW back pixel is coming first, so you have to actually give it that value first, which is the color first. Then give it the, the other one, which is, uh, that comes after it, which is in this case, event mask, okay? But this is kind of, as you can see, it's kind of clunky way of doing it. You have to always check for order, etc. There is a nicer one, nicer function to, to not have such a problem, which is AUX, an auxiliary function, a helper function. So create window, AUX, uh, create window AUX, there you go. You give it the connection, then the depth, basically all of these guys, almost, right? But instead of this value list, Instead of an array, you give it a struct. And that's what's interesting. If I actually hold control, it is an XCB create window value list T struct. It's a pointer to it. So what I could do, I could come here, uh, address of, I'm going to use my initializer list syntax. I'm going to paste that struct there and I'm going to open the initializer list. And now I can give it basically uh, the properties that I want without caring about any order or whatever Which is pretty cool stuff actually. It's quite nicer. So for example, I could say background pixel is equal to what? Equal to black pixel And XCB event mask exposure That one is the event mask. Of course a beginner uh, the mistake is to set the property here in the struct or in the array, but to forget to actually set it in the value mask, okay? Or to actually try to listen to some events here to handle some event, but you didn't register it here in the event mask, uh, which is not gonna work. So yeah. Uh, but as you can see, this is much cleaner than this guy, so I'm gonna get rid of this guy, okay? And of course you could use AUX only if you're using this uh, util. And to be exact, xcb aux.h. Okay, there you go. You have all these helper functions, which is quite nice. Okay, pretty cool stuff. In fact, no one's shown me this AUX functions really. All people, all resources I've seen in the, you know, in the internet, like they were just using xcb stuff. Uh, but then I found out about XCBA UX and stuff myself and then check the those functions that it just made sense, okay? Uh, instead of doing them on my own. So now let's just remove that thing. And there you go. Now you got this. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? All uh, right. Now instead of black pixel, we could also say white pixel. As I said, XCB only guarantees that you could have a white and black pixel but you could also have a true true color of course if the display supports that how do you do that well you gotta use some hex stuff now background pixel is a un 32t which means it has four bits uh, uh 32 bits and now each hex character is four bits now what is a bit bit is either zero or one now each character, each hex character represents a nibble, which is four bits. There's also a byte, which is eight bits. Uh, to represent a byte, you have to say, you have to give it two characters, two hex characters, okay? Now for F is the last character, right? So in, for example, in decimal, there is zero, one, two, two, up to nine, basically, okay? 
but in hex there's up to nine but then after that you say a b c d e f up to f okay so you have 16 uh, values that are possible from zero to fit to to 15 okay so yeah pretty cool stuff now let's actually set this to all zeros one two three four uh yeah right five six seven eight there you go eight eight hex characters which means 32. there we go we got black because zero is black right now blue is right here is this byte or this two hex characters with this two nipples right so if i say ff here i'm gonna get a blue color as you can see here if i say let's keep this zero zero and if i say ff here instead i'm gonna get green if i say zero zero here then ff here which is red a full red because ff which is basically the maximum value or 255 in decimal uh okay if you're all right so here this is just the alpha but i don't know how to actually make the window transparent the alpha right now whether you use it as ff or zero zero whatever value doesn't look like it matters uh, but maybe there's some kind of way to actually uh you know like make the window supports transparency but yeah for now i'll just keep it as ff which is basically opaque um but yeah and now if you want let's say yellow which is red and green you're gonna set the red and the green to full and there you go we got yellow pretty cool stuff isn't it now instead of doing it this way if you don't know how hex works what we could do uh, we could create a function that does this stuff for us okay so we could say un32t get color okay you give it the course un32t red un32t green un32t blue and the alpha okay so we're gonna return first of all blue blue doesn't need anything special special because this is the first uh value basically if you say zero here right by the way let me add the semicolon there for a second if you say zero here we'll set it to well zero if you say 255 here decimal basically it's gonna be blue essentially because blue is like the the least in the least significant bits so you don't need any kind of uh, uh, special behavior to actually set the blue so we're just going to return blue there next up is the what what it was red green blue yeah next up is the green so how do we do green we're going to order them together or in the bit manipulation world is kind of like a plus operation all right and here how we're gonna plus so the thing is if you go back zero xff i'm just gonna set them like this so it's much easier to see uh, sadly c doesn't support uh separators like this yet but anyways i think in next versions of c it would but i don't know anyway so this is the blue now for the green what we need is to actually shift shift how much four bits eight bits so to shift eight bits how do we shift eight bits to the left and this is how you do it well green here you basically give it the value that you want to shift left and then how much bits you want to shift left which is in this case eight okay uh now green is done same uh same kind of thing with blue but this time instead of shifting eight you want to shift 16. same thing with alpha shift uh 24 because 16 plus 8 is 24. and there you go now we're done with get color now if we come here 
And instead of this, we can say get color. Um, you can say red, for example, whatever. Alpha, you can set it to whatever. It doesn't seem like it matters, but there you go. This is what you get if you mix up red and blue. Uh, if you mix up all of them, you get white, of course. As you can see pretty cool stuff indeed. Now you just get the, your regular red, green, blue from 0 to 255, which is quite nice. Awesome stuff. Or you could say 0xf, f essentially, right? So you could do both, uh, whatever you want now. But yeah, anyways. So I like the value, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.1 times. Hold on a second. Uh, 0 0.1 times 200, 255. Yeah, I like two, 25. Okay, 25. So let's go with that. 25 alpha. And there you go. I like this color. So let's go with that. And just to make this more accessible, I'm going to actually create an array here. UN32T, oh man, UN32T, window background color, array, is equal to this initializer. Now I can give it the colors that I want, choose 25, 25, 25. Uh, next up, 55 for alpha. Now what I can do basically, Say window background color. There we go. Oh, hold on. No, 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 no. Uh, actually, yeah. Green, blue, alpha. Instead of doing it, you know, using a function call, I can just inline it. To be honest, let's just inline it. Okay, how do you inline it? Well, so like this. Now instead of blue, I'm going to say window background color uh, 2, the third value. The, oh my god, what's going to happen? What's happening here? Window background. Uh -huh. 1, which is the second value, then the first value for blue. And the last value for alpha, which is the fourth. Three, okay, index three, there you go. Pretty cool stuff. And now I don't need that semicolon there, and there you go. Now we're still back to square seven, but it's much nicer. The, the, the thing that we need right now to make this even more nicer, <laughs> okay, is to, let's see. Uh, okay, uh, so the thing is right now when you play or when you run the application and you close the window, the only thing that is stopping us right now is just this assertion of generic event failed, okay? Uh, but how do we actually exit in a good way? How do we do that? Um, so it, it turns out it's not that simple. <laughs> But I'm going to show you. So basically, closing the window is not part of, in, it's kind of like not part of X11 in some sense, X11 protocol. But it is in something called window manager protocols. Okay. Now, window manager protocols is a property. So you could, you have to get the atoms property first and then the atom value of wm delete window which is a possible value for wm protocols or window manager protocols so this is what we're gonna do and it's gonna be quite interesting because right now i'm gonna show you how you can actually send requests to the because until now we only sent requests and we just forgot about them. we don't check any replies or whatever okay uh, but right now I'm going to show you how you can actually send a request and also get the reply from the server. 
and the reply will basically contain the atoms that we need. Uh, so yeah, essentially. So before creating a window, even, just after creating the, the connection, uh, you can do this here. We can get the WM protocols property first, okay? So how to do this? Let's see. First of all, I'm gonna have XCB intern Adam. Cookie T. And remember that cookie is just something you get when you uh, when you send a request. For example, XCB create window actually gives you a cookie. Uh, that refers to that request. And then I can use that cookie to get a reply from the server. And this is what I'm gonna do. Essentially here I'm gonna create an intern atom cookie. Okay, I'm gonna initialize it once and reuse it because I don't really care about the cookie, nor do I care about the, the reply. I only care about the atom inside the reply, as you're gonna see in a second. But in turn, so essentially I'm gonna reuse these two variables. So in turn atom reply t. Okay, so in turn atom reply. Interesting. Uh, okay. So next up is intern atom uh, cookie. So now we're gonna make the request to get the property WM protocols. So intern atom cookie. All right, let's see. Hmm. Is equal to what? Oh yeah, equal to XCB intern atom. So we're gonna get an intern atom atom uh, connection. So we're gonna give it the connection only if it exists. Do you want? So what's gonna happen when that internal atom doesn't exist? Do you want to create it if it doesn't, or no? Or do you just want to you know return null that atom doesn't exist? I'm just gonna say true if. It, if it doesn't exist, create it. I don't care. Okay, fine. <laughs> name length. So the name length. So to understand what is name length, let's give it the name first. The name will be a special kind of name, which is called WM protocols. Okay. This is the name of that property, that, uh, that intern atom that we want. Okay. That we want to get from the server. It's called WM protocols. And this guy have 12 characters. So you can say this, or you could say Sterling, you know, WM protocols, etc. Right. Uh, in fact, you could even define them as WM protocols like this. And then I can define the length of it. Don't have to do it this way, just uh, so WM protocols length. And here I can say WM protocols. And uh, here WM protocols length. Okay, pretty cool stuff. And that's how, and now you're gonna get the cookie for that request to get the intern atom, uh, WM protocols. Next up, we have to get the reply. So intern atom reply, uh, uh, okay, is equal to what? XCB intern atom reply. Give it the connection. We give it XCB intern atom cookie. So here you give it the cookie, as I said, the identifier of the request, okay? So here I'm gonna give it the intern atom reply. Uh, cookie, I mean. Next up is XCB generic error. And as you can see, it's uh, actually pointer to pointer, which means it's probably an array of errors. But I don't care about errors right now. I'm just going to set it to null. Or you can set it to zero, but I'm going to set it to null. Uh, okay, what's next? Oh yeah, I forgot that intern atom reply should be a pointer because it actually allocates memory. And since it allocates memory, you have to free it. So you have to make sure when you're done with the reply, you have to free that reply. 
intern atom reply. So free intern atom reply, there you go. But before I'm freeing that intern atom reply, uh, if we go to actually the, as you can see, it contains response type, add zero, sequence, length, and atom. I only care about the atom that it gets. It basically, this is a reply which gives me the intern atom. So I'm just going to extract this atom, which is essentially just so you enter the 2T. And I'm going to free the reply. So how do you do that? By the way, I did find this through an answer in, in you know, searching in Google. But the, the nice thing is the fact that they have a memory leak, but because they didn't free it. I knew that I need to free it just because I looked into the documentation. <laughs> There's a lot of things that is missing, you know, uh, for XCV, but there you go. I'm trying to fill the gap here, as you can see. Uh, all this information, like I, for example, XCV event response type, AUX, uh, ICCM. There's a lot of things that I couldn't find in the web. Maybe ICCM I did find in the web, actually, yeah. But there's some things that I just uh, explored myself. But anyway, anyway, uh, next up is let's get the atom. Okay, so uh, atom T is it into an atom T like this? No, I think it's just an atom T, right? Hold on a sec, Nick. CB intern atom. No, it's just a uh, CB atom T, I believe. Let me just make sure though. Yes, it's just a normal atom, okay. Atom T, what we're gonna say here? I'm gonna say, actually, to I don't like to, to do abbreviations. I'm just gonna call this window manager <laughs> protocols. Mm, property name <laughs> so big but it's quite um descriptive so yeah just deal with it if, if you want to do it like this but it's fine so wm protocols property name property name length it's also an easy remedy for name clashes so yeah all right olive exists true property name left property name and there you go so now i'm gonna say window manager wm property product well window manager protocols property is equal to what it's equal to intern atom reply the atom. Of course, make sure to actually use this guy, this arrow, because it's a, well, a pointer. To a struct, not a struct. Uh, so, yep, yep, yep. Now, of course, after that, after I got my atom, I extracted my atom, I can free the, the reply. I don't need it anymore. Uh, now, the thing is, this is how you get intern atoms. This is the whole process of how you get intern atoms. Uh, so now I need to get another intern atom called WM delete window. And I'm going to do the same thing, really. Uh, define. It's called WM delete window. Okay, there is 16 characters there. Window manager protocols. You could use Sterling, but yeah. A window manager protocols property name delete window now let's make sure window manager delete window property instead of protocols delete window there you go interesting stuff now i'm just gonna I'm gonna copy this block of code you could put it into a function right now i just don't want to bother uh, doing any functions, I just want to inline everything uh, so it's clear what's going on. 
Uh, okay, so instead of manager protocols, it's going to be window, delete window, right? Name length. And here, instead of protocols, it's delete window property name. Okay. And of course, as, I, as you can see, I'm just reusing the intern Adam Cookie in a reply variable that I've used before because I don't need the values anymore. So, uh, yeah, window manager. I only need the XCB atom, though. This is the only thing that I'm creating again. The other ones I'm just reusing. Okay, pretty cool stuff. Intern Adam reply, Adam. Now, instead of window manager protocols, uh, man, uh, protocols, right? I'm going to say window delete. And instead of property, it's not really a property. This is a value. Uh, or let's call it protocol, actually. Window delete protocol. Because while window protocols, uh, window manager protocols is the property, this is an actual protocol. Okay, so anyway. Um, that's pretty much it. Now, how do I manage this? So now if I actually play, he actually quitted. Interesting. Mm. Maybe because actually didn't. Hold on, let me let me try with the other one that I actually used before. Because this is the one that I actually used. Huh? Something is kind of wrong, maybe. Window manager, window delete protocol, let's go. Free screen, window AUX. Really? Okay, let's try to, to actually do it anyways. So case client, CB client message. I was expecting something, but looks like it's not doing it for some reason, but yeah. What if I print if just to make sure that I'm getting the client message? Yeah, I didn't get the client message. Interesting. How? Mm, did I miss something? Are we flushing? Yeah, we're flushing. Mm. Can I actually just... Uh-huh. to protocols property and the window delete protocol so it looks like we're getting the atoms 305 and 306 so what's wrong client message Let's just, let's just show you how it works anyways and see then what's wrong. So client message event T. Now client message event, client message event is equal to, well, basically I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. All right, I'm just going to cast. So event T, add the pointer there and then say generic event. That's basically how it works. And of course, this should be a pointer. I'm also going to get grab the data. So the that guy, so client message data T client message data is equal to what? To client message event dot and notice there's all this stuff. There's format, type, data, window, response type, sequence, not, blah, blah, blah. Right? 
Yeah. There's also the window, as you can see. So if you have multiple windows, you have to account for this. Uh, so yeah, all right. So, 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 I care about data right now, but I can just actually do it directly. I just do it directly, okay. So if, uh, let's just do that guy, that window thing, just for the sake of the tutorial. So client message event. Yeah, okay. Window is equal to what? To the window that we have. And then if client message event data, and data is an struct, data 32. In fact, it's a union, okay? Data 32, data 16, data 8. So it depends on which client message you're talking about. It will have a different kind of thing. But in my case, I need data 32, okay? Data 32, what? Uh, zero, because it's an array. So the for the WM delete window, at least, uh, I mean, WM protocols, the protocols will have data 32. And the first element will refer to the protocol, which protocol is it? Which atom protocol is it? So here I'm just going to say, is it equal to, uh, to what? Let's see. Uh, yeah, the atom that I have, what, what is it called? Uh, it is called close window, I think. Did What did I call it, bro? Uh, delete window. Yeah, window manager, window delete protocol, Adam. Okay, there you go. This is it. Is it, is it equal or not? If it's equal, there you go. And the data 32 one is the actual timestamp. Uh, so you enter the 2t timestamp, at least in this case, of course. And the other data 32 stuff, it depends on which event you're talking about. And I don't really know where to find that data. <laughs> so anyways, timestamp is equal to what data? Same thing really for this guy. But to be honest with you, it's kind of nice to have the data there, maybe. I don't know, I'll just do it like this. So data 32, 0, uh, 1. That is the timestamp. Here I can say is running is equal to false. Okay, so as to close the program. And it looks like it's not working. So I'm going to pause the, the recording for a second just to see what's going on wrong here. And then we're going to come back. Oh, yep. I quickly figured out the problems. <laughs> really quick. Okay. So first of all, this is not a problem. This is not the problem, but this is just a little thing that I want to fix is this property name thing. This is not a property, this is a protocol basically. So let's just uh, name this protocol, protocol. Okay, now let's just actually change this here too. This is not the actual problem, this is just something that I uh, noticed that is not right. A terms of wording, not uh, actual functionality, but yeah, that one. Okay. Now the thing is, I noticed that this is not used. Okay. It's only in signed, but never accessed. So I never used this property <laughs> and why? Because I had to actually set the, the window manager protocols property to the window that I just created, of course. So how do I do that? Well, Create window AUX, set the new name, WM name, the resizable, of course, by the way, you can actually, of course, uh, first of all, you can actually flush every time we do some request, uh, which is kind of, you know, just wasting uh, optimization if the actual, if it is an actual remote thing, right? But yeah, 
And second of all, you can actually go ahead and create functions to kind of like GFW, just abstract things, abstract, abstract this whole thing, just give a function to create a window, etc. No need to deal with all this stuff. But yeah, fine. Now, how we can do that? Well, let's see. XCB. Now, there's, I think, two ways to do this. But the first way of doing it, I think. Hold on a second. Let me just see something. Yeah, there is the ZWM protocols, right? There is connection. Uh, there is window. Then you give it the WM protocols atom here. Uh, so I'm just going to give it my protocols here. Protocols property. There you go. Next up, you give it how much protocols you want. In this case, one and the list to it. Since I only have one protocol, I can just do this trick right here. Otherwise, if you have multiple protocols that you want to set, you, you need to allocate memory for multiples in array or whatever, or just create a, a constant array. But anyways, here, what we need, we need atom T, okay. CB. Add some T, address off. Uh, I'm going to use the initializer thing. I'm going to give it here the, the value, the protocol that I want, which is in this case, delete protocol. There you go. This ICCM function basically helps you to actually set multiple protocols at once, as you can see, and you don't have to go crazy about it. Uh, otherwise, you could use XCB set property, basically. Uh, uh, change property just like we did before with the the name instead of uh, the, the the window name or title instead of this guy okay so change property and then just fill all this stuff for example the atom property right here you're gonna give it the protocols property atom essentially but yeah i don't want to deal with that uh so now if we actually run this yep i forgot again the semicolon uh, there you go. Now, if I actually quit this, there you go. It actually quitted the application successfully. And there we go. There we go. Nice stuff. Uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Uh, so what's next? What's next? What's next? Let's see. Mm, I wanted to do something. Yeah, I wanted to show you that when you actually set the property, I wanted to show it you before, but it didn't work out. But now, let's say I didn't have that client message. Now I only set the the WM protocols property. Okay. Now what's gonna happen when you actually click on this close button? Nothing happens. Okay. But when you actually handle the event as we did before, right? You actually, there you go. Boom. Now, I didn't actually use this timestamp, so let me show you that timestamp. It's basically timestamp in milliseconds, and just to show you more, I can actually say a milliseconds, okay? Just to clearly show that it's in milliseconds. Uh, timestamp milliseconds, dash, uh, not dash, well, percent I, I think. And you give it the timestamp milliseconds. Now, when you close the window, it's going to give you the milliseconds when it got closed. If I didn't set is running, now I can look at that. Click, click, but hmm, what's happening? Yeah. Uh, in fact, I forgot the new line to actually flush the stream, then the output stream. Okay. Now, if I keep on clicking, as you can see, I get the timestamps. Look at that. It's in milliseconds. And I know because it's milliseconds because I can see, I can notice that this guy is the actual seconds. Okay. And this guy seems like just milliseconds, right? And this is in thousands. So that's what I how I knew that it's in milliseconds. But anyways, that's essentially it. Um, so... Closed at timestamp 
LA second is running equal to false. And there we go. We got this beautiful thing right here. And we could do the same thing with the other guy. Switch event response type. Uh, let me do this. Just going to update this guy right here. And pretty much should be the same thing, really. I'm just going to do this. CB client message, event window. If it's that window, do this. And there you go. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so that was it. It was so nice doing this, guys. So pretty much we have all this nice stuff. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could actually, to be honest, I'm going to go ahead. I'm probably going to put this guy into its own kind of function, maybe. Um, hmm. So, 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 so. Yeah, I guess so. Fine. Let's actually do it. So I'm going to get this whole thing. I'm going to put it into its own function. I can call it void process event, maybe. Uh, we'll see what it's going to take. But yeah, let's just copy this stuff. I'm going to see. So first of all, uh, it needs is running. OK. It needs generic event window. So we could make is running equal to that. So you just say return false. No, 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 let's just do it this way. Okay. I'm going to say is running is a Boolean. So Boolean. Yeah, pointer is running. Okay. I can essentially uh, dereference that and give it false here. Window, I need the window. In this case, we only have one window, but yeah. So window T window. CB window T. And also, I do need the generic event. Let's actually give it first. So, CB generic event T. Oh man, CB generic event T. Generic event. Of course, a pointer to that guy. As you can see, is it running? And of course, I need this window manager delete protocol in this case. So, comma. Mm, it's a uh, atom basically. XCB atom T. Window manager delete protocol. And I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully. Now let's use that process event function. Let's start here, okay? Process event, you're going to give it the generic event that we have is running. And of course, is running, we're going to give it the address, not is running itself, not the value. And so we can actually go ahead and change this value. That's why I give it a pointer instead of the value. So you can actually go ahead and change the variable. So I'm going to give it the window, which is just uh, I didn't pass a pointer because it's just a value referring to it, right? Nothing too crazy there. And the window manager delete protocol. This is also just a value. And there you go. All right, let's see. So yeah, seems like it's pretty much working lovely. Make this even clearer for the uh, 
Yeah, for here, 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 here. Where is it? Here. This is a rect, essentially. Rect. Okay, there you go. Of course, you don't need the sprint ifs and stuff like this. It's just to uh, demonstrate uh, what could be used, etc. But yeah, anyways. So, is there anything that I would like to show, though? Uh, pretty cool stuff. Not window resizable. Yeah, uh, let's say we have some kind of boolean. And let's say, uh, wait, wait event equals false. Okay. So if it's wait event, we're going to use wait event. Otherwise, we're going to use ball. Okay. So depending on which one you want. So, wait. Event. Is, let's say is wait event just to, and here let's say is window resizable. And there we go. For this guy, we're gonna do it here. So, uh, if both have while is running, yeah. But I'd rather have multiple branches outside of the loop, right? So if is wait event, or I mean is wait event, okay. So if it's waiting for event, then do this. Else, if it's full events, you don't want to wait for events. You want to continuously pull events and process them, etc. So this is basically useful for games, pulling events used for, for games. So pull events for games. But anyways, anyway, never mind. So let's just not take the comment there. Declaration shadow is a local variable. Oh uh, yeah, we don't need this guy right now. So that's pretty much it. To be honest, uh, since they're shared, this wall is run. Let's just do it anyways. Just to, to let the clutter get down a bit. Right? Right or no? Yo, what's going on here? Yo, I'm kind of going crazy. Hold on, go back, go back, please. Go back. This, this is getting crazy, right? So I removed that guy. I no longer need this. And there you go. Now I do need this essentially. There you go. So if it's wait event. Okay. If it's wait event, then generic event while well, is running. If it's wait event, do this. Process event else. Essentially, do it here. Do the process event here. So it's even clear how to use pull and wait. So now, now it is actually. Waiting, right? No, it is polling, I think, is wait event. Hold on a second. Is wait event, XCB wait for event, okay. 
So now it is what it's doing. It is actually pulling, right? Because it's false. It is pulling. Interesting. Uh, otherwise, this weight event is equal to true. It's going to go ahead and pull. Now it is pulling. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty cool stuff, indeed. Indeed. And just to show the difference, printf, I'm going to say printf update. So after processing your events, you could update the application, basically. Now, uh, I forgot the new line, actually. This is for wait. So it's supposed to only update if there's some kind of event. So right now there is no, uh, and only if there is a registered event. Okay, so even if I'm moving my mouse, it doesn't actually update the window because I didn't register that event, right? Uh, but if I actually go ahead and make this poll instead of wait, you're gonna notice why actually waiting is save saves power. There you go. Now it actually updates every time it can. It's kind of like a an infinite while loop base. It is actually an infinite while loop. Well, not infinite though, but basically it doesn't stop. It doesn't wait. It constantly updates, uh, which is of course useful for games where you have a lot of animations, etc. every time. But for GUI applications, maybe, or let's say some software render that you only want to update when there's some events or something, you never really know, but yeah. Uh, if you want, for example, let's say, you want to update the application if you want to wait and, and update the application when there's let's say some mouse movement then you have to actually go ahead and and make sure to have xcb events max ex mask exposure and then i mean this uh, xcb cw event mask right and then just uh, or XCB, let's say, let's see, motion, mouse motion, I think, or no, but let's see motion stuff. There is a lot of motions right there. So XCB event mask, uh, all of them starts with event masks. So there you go. And there is motions. Now there is button motion, there is pointer motion. So I think I think what happening here pointer motion is basically your mouse moving around the window, but it's not holding any button. Okay, uh, it's just hovering around. Okay, but if it is holding, let's say dragging some elements or something, then depending on which button it's holding, it's gonna uh, actually register any one of these guys. Button one motion, button two motion, button three motion, etc. Let's start with pointer motion, I think. Let's see how that goes. So now if I add, when I added that, now as you can see, it updates when I move my mouse. <laughs> Look at that. When I move my mouse, it updates, which is quite nice. What if I'm dragging stuff? If I'm dragging though, if I'm clicking on a button and uh, dragging my pointer, no, it doesn't update as you can see here. So pretty cool stuff indeed. Um, what if we want keys? CB event mask. Uh, there's key release and there's also key press. Now there's also another thing that you could actually easily miss is that uh, to register, for example, press and not register release or something like that. But yeah, for example, if I re register that now, if I uh, press a button should update there you go it is updating now <laughs> so pretty cool stuff indeed but yeah uh, pretty interesting indeed so uh, maybe so to be honest with you I'm just gonna stop this uh, <laughs> this uh, episode for now right so 
we may actually do more in the next videos so you're gonna find the code in github below uh, if you think something is wrong please uh, submit a PR or an issue or tell me in the server and please join also the server uh, if you like to so that's pretty much it for now let me just see this warnings condition is always reachable code I don't care condition is always true I don't care and reachable code I don't care okay pretty cool stuff all right so that was it for this video thank you guys for watching and see you later goodbye